Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I pray that everyone is doing well today. It is such a blessing to really to be in the land of the living. And a lot is going on around our nation. And uh, in our area here, there has been a lot of um, circumstances surrounding a lot of murders that has happened uh, within the last week. Uh, I heard how they've been going on around the world too as well. And uh, what one of the things that I have come to know and understand of what the Lord he really is wanting to do in our lives. Excuse me one moment. I didn't know you before. I just really just run out of battery here. And one of the key things we want to pray about is like, like I say, can I say about praying for our communities, praying for our cities, our city and state, our, our nation. Uh, this is something that, we, that is, must be done because we are in a place where now a lot is going on in, a, in the place of where we are in our, in our surroundings. Uh, last month, uh, something that happened with a prominent, prominent place uh, in our city here. And one of the things, uh, there was a murder that happened. And one of the things that uh, people were saying was that, you know, it normally this is not something that happens down here. We don't know where it's going to happen. We must invoke the presence of the Lord there in those places and present him in all situations. Father, we just thank you now, Lord God. Lord, these, these families, Lord God, that is without loved ones, Lord God, because of murders, Lord God, the children that has passed away, Lord God, within this past weekend till today, Lord God, Lord, they're taken away from their families at an early age, Lord. Father, we thank you, God. You're the God of all comfort, Lord. Give them peace, oh God, Lord. We know that there are circumstances surrounding these wise things happen, Lord, in those neighborhoods. Father, I thank you how you bless each and every neighborhood of those that under the sound of my voice that will hear this message, Lord. God, that they will look to pray over the neighborhoods, Lord God. Pray for peace in their neighborhoods. Lord, we thank you, oh God, Lord, how you will make us all aware and attentive to our surroundings, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word today that will bring us, that we would come attentive to your word today, Lord, to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, Lord. Lord, speak to us, Holy Spirit, of what the Lord really wants us to hear today. Father, we thank you for these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, <laughs> this month, and I tried to really to bring some understanding to what I was bringing up this month uh, as what I say in this phrase here, how God has called you. Uh, that's a question mark. And really... Um, surrounding how has God really called you? Uh, to, put it, to put it this way, when God called me, okay, I was looking at what I was doing. I was at a place where that I was trying to actually start a business. And to start a business, um, I needed friends. I needed others really to be a part of this. And we had put together actually, something that was going to be nucleus and, and concrete. But everybody started to get saved. Everybody started to have certain circumstances where it come up, arise and come up, said, no, we are not going to do this. We have to go this way. And I said, fine, good. You know, praise the Lord. Good. I didn't say praise the Lord, but I said, that's good for you. But for me, what I'm trying to do for me and my household, I got to go where I got to go. And so... We didn't part ways, but we did go in a different direction. Later on that year, they asked me, they said, look, you got to come, you got to come. And I was struggling and trying to really to bring things about, trying to look for people that could work with me and things of that nature. And I was struggling with that. And how God called me was how that he saw, how I saw my children. I didn't want my two boys to be brought up the same way I was. I didn't want them to have the struggles that I had to struggle with. I, although I was a, I was the only child. One would you think that got everything? I slept on a fold-up cot until I was a teenager. Before actually, I had my own full bed. When a twin, twin beds actually, that I had my own room. I've always slept in the living room. Until I was about thirteen or fourteen years old. These are situations that actually that how God brings us to him. And that we know that uh, in these situations, there are things that happen that are going on. 
Uh, here we're looking at Matthew chapter 22 here in the light of uh, uh, the king have, looking to have a wedding banquet for his son. And we're going to start here in verse 1 and look at this and bring this into a place where of seeing really just what, how it fits your situation or circumstances of how God is calling you. Again, Jesus spoke to them in a parable and he said, the kingdom from heaven, this is the International Standard Version, may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet uh, for his son. And he sent uh, he sent his servants to call those who had been who had been invited to the wedding and they refused to come. So he sent other servants saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatted calf have been slaughtered. Everyone is ready. Come to the wedding. But they paid no attention uh, to this and went about, went away. And one to his farm, another to his business. Uh, the rest grabbed the king's servant and treated him brutally, and then killed them. Then the king became uh, then the king became outraged, 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 and he sent his servant, he sent his troops, and they destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. In other words, these are prominent people who actually had cities. And he didn't really just want to get them the murderers, but he really destroyed their cities also. Now, a city is a place where it's populated as a certain population, where you categorize it as a city. There's a, there's a certain ranking of population, a population that has to be given for a town. Okay? So for a providence, for a just really for just something which actually there's just a little village. Okay, there was one place that I know that actually that I was trying to find on the map that I was looking to go to, but because it was only rated as a village with a certain population, it was not on the map. And I had to call to get directions of how to get there. And they said, because we have less than a certain amount of people, I forgot what it was, the number was, they were not actually on the map. And I was like, wow, I didn't really truly believe this. I was the first time I had ever, ever brought aware of the, that type of situation. Verse 8, he says, Then he told his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy, he says. It says, So go into the roads leading out of the city and invite as many people as you can find to the wedding. Uh, those servants went out into the streets and brought everyone they found, evil and good alike. And the wedding hall was packed with guests. When the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man, man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. And he asked him, friend, how did you get here, get in here without wedding clothes? But the man was speechless. Then the king told his servants, tie his hands, his feet, and throw him into outer darkness and the place there will be weeping and gashing of teeth because there are because many are invited but few are chosen now the word chosen there means as a favorite as a favorite now can we really say that those in this banquet were favored at favor the reason why they were favored because those that actually was actually truly invited there and, and, and given an invitation to come, they were given to them in advance to come to the wedding. They refused to go. And in an instant, in a moment's notice, the service was sent out ready to go into the, into the highways and to find those out there and actually to bring them in or to propel them to come in. Okay ask them to demand that they will come in until the banquet hall was filled. Now, and the reason why I put it this way, or what I asked, what I asked this phrase, how God has called you. Where were you when he called you? What were you doing? What were the, what were the circumstances surrounding uh, in your circumstances, situations, the things with what's going on in your mind, when all of a sudden 
God spoke to you and said, okay, I want you to be drawn to myself now. And you have to stop what you were doing and look to really to seek the Lord. Because he was bringing him, he was bringing you to himself. He wants you to be a part of his banquet. Now, there's other parts about this that we want to talk about. But the first part is knowing that, okay, you are not just called, I'm really going to bring him out, that you are not just called really to be a part of just what you figure and understand it's being a part of an assembly of a church that's under a certain organization of such. But you are called to the Lord. Now, he brought you to that place there, but how much are you looking to hear his voice? How much are you looking to really to not only just be in fellowship with the people around you, how much are you really as an individual that God called you to hearing his voice and knowing that in this situation, he wants to change your life? That's the key. He wants to change your life. Just as we talk about with the genealogy yesterday out of chapter chapter one of Matthew, where they said the genealogy of Jesus, and it started with the son of David, the son of Abraham. There's no way possible that that really could be about, but it's he or really of the circumstances surrounding of how God called, called David and how he called Abraham. When he called David, he has said in chapter 13 of 1 Samuel, he says, I've already have I've already sought a man after my own heart, he said. And when and when Samuel had gone to, to Jesse's house and looked at him, he said, Surely this is the one, one that looked real great and beautiful and everything. He says, No. He says, Man looks only just at the appearance, I look at the heart. When he called Abraham, he gave Abraham the specific directions. He said, when he called Abraham, he said, I want you to come out from your from your father's house, out of your family, out from your country, and I'll make you view a great nation. He was born out of idolatry. He was brought out of being a heathen. Although he was very prominent, had a lot with him as well, who he brought out with him. He brought out a lot with him, his nephew, because his, his, a lot's father had passed away have been killed, but it's the place where when God calls you, a lot of times you cannot bring people with you. And like just like we showed in the verses that uh, that uh, when God called called Abraham, it wasn't until he really let Lot pick the land that he wanted to pick. And then he told Abraham, he said, look, look to the north, the south, the east, and the west. As far as, far as everything around you, that's what I'm going to give to you as an individual. When God calls you, he God called you to himself. He has a plan for your life already. And what he had already predestined before the foundation of the world, he already has said that who you really were going to be. I would have never thought that God would call me the way he called me. In the place where the, of who I was, in my circumstances and situation, I was looking at my two, my two sons and saying, I want them to have a better life than I had. I did not know that that was going to bring me to the Lord. I did not have an understanding, a clue to this. When they had invited me, they invited me, my friends invited me to come to a meeting. Uh, I said, I got saved. Uh, I said, look, this lady, she really is a, she's a prophet, you know, and she prophesies with people. And several of us have really, the God has said that, you know, that we were called, we are called. And I said, okay, that's great. You know, I said, come to the meeting, come to the meeting, see what God says to you. And I was like, okay, uh, I'll come simply because I know it's close friends and I trust really what they say. But I was really just going there really just to really just to observe and see really just what was going on. But the lady called me up and, and actually had, was asked me to stand up. And when I stood up, she started to speak to me. And the presence of God overwhelmed me so much. All I could do was just simply cry. And she said, she said, God's presence is on you now. And yes, she kept telling me that she told me that I am called. God has called me. In my circumstances, in my situation, in my dire need of wanting to really to provide for my family, of what the Lord really was looking to do in my life at that time, I had to come to know and understand that God had a call on my life. And I really didn't really fully understand it at that time. And when I walked away, I getting out of that place, I said to myself, I said, okay, yeah, I heard of, you know, but still, I, I'm not exactly sure about this. I went back a second time a couple of weeks later. And she asked people, those who want to pray for somebody and stand in proxy for them. I stood up for a friend of mine who was going through certain situations in his own life. And I stood up 
And the only thing she kept saying to me was, was that you are called, you are called, you are called, you are called. And I looked, and when I opened my eyes to look, because I'm thinking about my friend John, his dire situation where he was at that time with his family, and she was talking to me and looking at me. This little woman was a little shorter than me. She had to be at least five feet tall. I was five, I was five foot nine at that time. But the thing is, is, is that how I looked down this little white gray haired lady uh, with kind of with kind of sleepy looking eyes, and she was speaking to me and pointing her little stubby finger at me and saying, "You are called. You are called. You are called." I don't know how many times she said it. But it let me know and reassured me that what she was saying, because she said, although you stood here for someone else, God said that you are called. I hid that in my heart, but I did not know that actually the things that was going to come about in circumstances and what God was bringing to me, how he was going to bring me to him, the place where that I accepted the call. I had a number of different prophecies after that, which that confirmed things. One that actually by a gentleman named Moses Vey, who was a prophet, he told me, he says, no, not, I'm sorry, not him, but it was uh, uh, another gentleman, uh, Mel Davis, I think it was, he said, you are a natural born leader of men. When he said that, I weeped and I cried because it was circumstances surrounding my life before I got saved. While I was a little boy, I always walked behind people. I did not look to be a part of really just who they were, although I wanted to be around others, although I didn't want to be a joke object. I did not want to really to have them really just to trip me up or something of that nature or really talk about me bad. So I would walk a little distance behind them. But they would, when, they, when they would get into arguments, though, they would come to me and ask me to make the final decision on who's right and who's wrong. And one of the things that we need to know and understand, regardless of who you are, just as it says here in the scripture here in verse 10, it says that he brought, it said they brought in those that were good and evil. So, so your circumstances surrounding you, it does not matter when God calls you. He already knows who you are. He already knows really just when you are going to come in, regardless of your circumstances, that how how God has called you in the place of where you are in your surroundings and the things that's going on in your life, even right now, the things that's going on in your life, the possibility that you may have lost, you may have lost loved ones, you lost finances, you're not sure really just where your next job is going to come from. It's hard to get interviews. It's hard really for you to do things that you think that, that really to help, really help yourself out as far as to further yourself. It seems like it's a hindrance. But God has a way to always bring things to a place where that when he's drawing him, he's drawing you to him, he knows just what he is doing. So be rest assured to sit back and ask God, really God, what is going on in my life? You're not just a church member. You're part of the body of Christ. You're part of his body. You are his bride. You're a part of the body of Christ. You need to come to know and understand, loved ones, brothers and sisters, uh, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen. You need to come to know and understand, really, that God has a call in your life. Each and every person has a call on their life, the call of favor. He has favored you to do a work to glorify his name. One of the things that, that I didn't read yesterday um, that, that I was so... Uh, that that was really I uh, wanted to bring out today, that when, when God talked about David in chapter 13 of 1 Samuel, one of the things that he says, he says, I've already sought a man. Okay, that word sought there means a man that will worship or pray. One that will worship and pray. That's the kind of person God is looking for. In John, in John chapter 4, verse, verse 24, of what Jesus says there, he says, God is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. In the sincerity of their heart, regardless of how evil you think that you may be or how people may, may perceive you, it does not matter if you're good or whatever or how you may perceive of yourself. When God calls you, he strips you of the place where that, so that you can be used by him. And some of you are going through those very type of situations, but in the name of Jesus, you are not in the place where the accident that it is hopeless. It's not endless. It's not place where the accident is just dead now. It's a place of a new beginning. It's a place where that you're going to come about and have faith in God, like the faith of Abraham, that you're going to believe. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter how young you are. Just as how Paul called 
called Timothy and told Timothy, I've already seen in your grandmother and in your mother that you are looking to be who you are going to be because that nature is in you of what God said is favored for him. The things that God really wants to do in your life now, you have to look, look to look into the word of God. Don't struggle with it. Just receive it. Don't try to read chapter by chapter. Read word by word and say, Lord, what is each word saying to me? Let it speak to you. Let the word of God really just saturate your heart and in your spirit and let the Holy Spirit just minister to you where you are and bring comfort to your heart. One of the key things we get needs to know and understand of out of Matthew chapter 10 or what it says there is that Jesus says that I didn't bring come to bring peace on the earth. I come to bring a sword. I'm going to divide father father against son, mother against daughter, uh, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Him going to divide the whole the household. Is, uh, your enemies are going to be of your own household. Rest assured, in those circumstances, those situations, God is doing a work in you. It's not You are not the black sheep. You are a sheep that actually the shepherd is looking to lead and guide from this moment on in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for how you speak to them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Give them comfort, Lord God. Give them direction, Lord. Don't let them really just really just stumble, Lord God. Don't let them really be depressed, Lord. Let them know in every situation who they are, Lord, and right now that they are called by you, Lord God. You have chosen them. You have favored them, Lord God, to show your glory here in the earth. And Father, I thank you for what you were doing in their lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You know, one of the great things about this, and then verse, verse 10 here and what he says here, because of how that the Gentiles are grafted in. He says, good and evil. In other words, there are people that are good and the people that are evil. And a lot of times, we see ourselves and we excuse ourselves and say, you know, I, I'm not that bad. I don't hurt nobody. But the key to it is this, of what I read in Romans. Uh, chapter 9 is also a chapter 11. And the key part in here, what he talked about in here, but Paul talks about it here, he says in verse 17, he says, Now if some of the branches, speaking about the Jews, have been broken off, and you, a wild olive branch, have been grafted into, into their place to share the rich root of the olive tree, do not boast about being uh, better than the other branches. If you boast, remember that you do not support the, the root. The root supports you. If God has favored you, it's not something for you to boast about. But it's something for you to meditate on and searching really, what, God, what are you calling me to? What do you ask me to have faith to do? What are you showing me really as my gifts are my gift and calling is? When God when God has a call for you, He's calling you to do something. We always use the one of Gideon because Gideon is is a, is a place where that Gideon was very of low self esteem. Okay, he was of low self esteem. I'm least in my father's house, and and my father's house is the least in our tribe in our nation. We are we are the low class. But God says, no, you are a mighty man of valor. Your circumstances don't mean nothing to the Lord when God favored you. Believe me, I know this. And it has taken me a while to come to know and understand really just how the Lord has called me, how God has gifted me, really just what my assignment is. And that's what the thing about about us being a part of the body of Christ, of the assembly, regardless of the circumstances of what denomination you may be a part of, organization you're a part of, God has called you to a specific calling. Not to really just be part of the group. We all have assignments. Your hand has an assignment. Each and every finger has an assignment which that it must carry out as far as how that you look to grip and grab things or how to handle things. Your eyes have a certain assignment. Your ears have a certain assignment. Okay, your legs, your feet have a certain assignment to carry out, but it's all a part of the body. You have a significant part to play in the body of Christ as well as being the mouthpiece of the Lord. That is one of the greatest things about what Lord really wants us to do because he has given us his Holy Spirit to speak forth the word of the Lord in the place where we are. This is how we must look to conduct ourselves. This is what God really has called us to. To prophesy, to speak blessings into the earth, to bring about things that are not as though they are. As we speak words of faith, the faith of Abraham. But then also we have the authority and the power of David too as well.
being in the being in the genealogy of Jesus. He speaks about David and he speaks about Abraham as far as being the lineage. One is those of faith, the other is those of, of kingship and authority. But they both are from the tribe of the lion of Jesus. Abraham is grafted in. It started with him as a Gentile. Amen. Who, who God called you? What, is, what are you calling yourself? Or how has God called you? That's a decision you have to make. If you look in the mirror and you're just looking at yourself and who you are and your circumstances around you, God has called you in that circumstance. He's bringing you to himself. And how he is bringing you to his, himself is in a place where the acts that you can serve him. You can do exceedingly above all that you could ask or think according to the riches of the glory of God in Christ Jesus. This is what the Lord wants. This is what the Lord is trying to bring about in our lives on a continuous basis. As we look to get into this message this, this month on this series of how has God, how God has called you, we're going to look at this and look at really just where God has you at this time. At what, at what point in your life that you are coming to him? Because it's very important for you really to, regardless of this pandemic, regardless of the things that happen, these tragedies are coming about and they seem like it's, more and more and more every day. Yes, and it's grievous and it hurts. Just as I spoke about yesterday to find out that one of our church members passed away. He's going to be missed. Wonderful gentleman. Wonderful gentleman. Wonderful. Very educated. Very talented. But unfortunately, we have lost him now. But we know that he's with the Lord. We know he loved the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in the lives of your people, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you are bringing people to yourself, Lord God, Lord, and how that you have called them, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, how that you have blessed them now, Lord. Lord, how you will bring about a place where they will come to know you, Lord. Father, give them, Lord God, the courage to ask the question, Lord, what do you want to do with my life? And Father, I thank you how that you are answer in Jesus' name. Amen. With that, until until Thursday, God bless you.